Hi everyone, in this stream I was looking at E-Ink's new 7 colour 5.7 inch display. This display is capable of showing 7 colours but it can't blend them, so when it comes to displaying images they need to be dithered to achieve the desired result. I took a standard RGB image of some apples and used Photoshop to convert it so that it could be shown on the E-Ink display. I was using an E-Ink XL Explained Pro with a Sam G55 board and I'll leave links in the description below for more info on these along with a link to the E-Ink software library. I hope you enjoy the video and if you'd like to see more like it then please hit subscribe. Okay, so we're going to delete that folder because we're not going to use it. Um, we might as well delete that as well. So if we keep just the e-ink library folder that's all saved in there and then let's load up Atmel Studio and create a brand new start project to do that. Here we go, let's give that a name, we'll call it apples because that's what we're going to be putting on the display and the only thing you need is the delay is that put in by default I can't remember no nope. pb10 pb11 cool all right that's pretty much all you need to do you just need to label the pins up with the correct names and then add in the delay one like I say, I think if you're using a Cortex M0, there's also a port driver that you need to add. But I think the Cortex M4s come come by default. If there's a port there, add it. If not, then don't worry about it. Let's program that in. Yeah. This will also give you an idea of how slowly these things are these things update as well. Which is the only downside to these colours really as well. There's a few downsides, but the main one is how slowly it updates. The other thing is it also has to update in two parts. It, it starts by doing a clean update, um, which is where it removes all of the ghosting of the previous image, and then it'll carry on and do a and do the actual update that it was supposed to. So the first thing we need to do is, let's copy that. We need to do a fill clean, followed by a put display buffer and update. Then we do a fill white and put display buffer with the new text on. So the software library doesn't actually make you do a clean, but you should do one. If you don't, you're going to wind up with basically. It's, I don't think it'll be the end of the world, but it'll be the previous display will, like the previous screen will still be sat there on the display, which can cause a bit of an issue if you're showing, you know, full size images and that kind of thing. But I don't think it'll necessarily harm the display. So here we go. So this is the clean initially. and then we do the actual update itself. It's not horrendously slow. It's certainly not suited to if a user comes along and presses a button or that kind of thing. But if you're showing like just an image or adverts or that kind of thing, it can be quite useful. I know quite a lot of hobbyists like to put things like calendars on these on these size displays and that kind of thing. So just to add a bit of color to that kind of, that kind of application would be quite cool. Certainly where a calendar wouldn't update very often perhaps like per day or every time you add in a new event or that kind of thing. So there we go. Looking good, but it needs an image. So I do have an image we prepared earlier. If I load that up, get rid of that. And here it is. So we're going to put this image onto that display. Um, I've already opened it up in Photoshop and removed all the background and that kind of thing. So we'll go through the, the steps required. The thing to note as well is that the, the software library will write grayscale images that have a grayscale value for each pixel or an alpha value for every pixel. Um, but it'll also show mono images where a one is black or a, and a zero is white or whatever you want to tell it. You, you basically tell it a one is equal to this color. So in that respect, you could load a, lo a mono image in red and white or red and black and that kind of thing. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this image, remove all the colors except for the colors that the display can handle, and then multiply that about four or five times or however many colors is needed. And we're going to put that as a mono image overlaid on top of one another. So there'll be a green mono image, brown, um, a red mono image, a blue mono image, an orange mono image, a black mono image, and a white one probably isn't necessary because it would just be the background. Image, image size, 
let's put it to 600 yeah that's fine so that's already smaller and then let's bring that down a little bit smaller again I can't select that call it like 300 so it takes up about half the size of, of the display and then let's go through there you go you can see it's a lot more pixelated now I don't think I don't think we'll have the image the issue sorry that we had a minute ago let's go to index color yes set a yeah that's right and click OK black green orange and red is the ones that we want black green orange and red okay bear with me it doesn't look great but it doesn't look terrible when it's on a display there you go if you zoom out that's a hundred percent so that's actually what it looks like if you look up close to, to these dithered images then of course they're gonna look terrible but if you actually zoom out as if you would when you were if you're looking at the display they don't actually look that terrible um, so let's save that and then close Photoshop because what we want to do now is copy that four times we're gonna have apples black apples red apples green and apples orange yeah that was it and then let's open all those up I shouldn't have closed first shot and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove all the colors from each of those images so that we're left with four images each with only one color and obviously transparent will be ignored by when we come to well it'll get turned into white but yeah that'll be ignored by the software library let's open those up so to start with let's zoom in let's go to select oh, sorry yeah select color range and then pick out red there we go so that's selected everything in the image that is that one shade of red go to select inverse and then delete and then we're left with nothing but the red pixels that we're going to need um, at this point we then need to turn that into black because when so the software that we're going to use to convert this bitmap image into um, as sort of you know the hex data that the, the library is going to read we'll see the red know that it's in black and white and then it will try to dither it again it'd be cool if the software did it color images and then we wouldn't have to do any of this but it doesn't so we have to go through this this process first so we'll go to image color table and then just remove the red and change it to black whoops there we go click OK and then we're done with that one same again with green cool that's it let's close Photoshop where have all my images gone there they are and then if we just view that you'll see there's all our black there's all our green there's all our orange and there's all our red so let's convert that into a bitmap so I use this I use a bitmap to LCD um, which is quite cool software I think it's only like 35 euros or something like that it's not that much money um, I know there are other there's quite a lot of people that make this kind of software so just use what whichever one you're comfortable with I quite like this one and I don't mind paying for it so yeah this is this was this is always my recommendation um, what size is this image this is where we find out it's way too big for the display and we're gonna have to do it all again Nah, that's fine so 300 by 234 let's set that uh, width is 300 and 324 so the number needs to be divisible by 8 only the height the width can be whatever you want but the height needs to be divisible by 8 um, otherwise uh, the the images won't be loaded correctly 240 I probably could have done that in my head there we go Uh, let's do that again. Load in first. No, that one. First, the black one. Okay. 
Yeah, see here, if it if it thinks that there's more than one colour, or if it's not quite black and white, then it will try and do it on its own. And we don't want it to do that. We don't, we don't want it to dither, because it'll mess up the pixels that we've done before. Um, I'm just going to do OK and see what happens. OK does nothing. Why does that think that's the wrong colour? Don't know. Well, let's see how it goes. If, um, if there's something wrong, we'll have to go back and look through it. Um, and then as far as the settings go, we want 8-bit, I think it's Big Indian, and then 240 over 8 is 30, quick maths, um, that just shows how many lines, how much data goes onto each line before it then carries returns and goes around to the next one. The only reason I like to have it as the same height is because if you then squint you can see what the image actually looks like. Um, it is vertical paging and I think that's it, that should be fine. Let's go to generate, here we go, export, export work to canvas and there we go. So that's the black part of our image. Let's copy all of that. And open up Sublime. We'll have, we'll make a new image for this. First, let's get rid of the extra space, and let's move that. Um, I'm going to load up another image just to copy the format of the so that the format is the same as the software library expects. Yeah, that's right. I'm not going to copy apples, which is in there, <laughs> but I'm going to copy a different one. So let's just do in Altec logo, and then we'll do apples new. Let's open that up in Sublime. Get rid of all the copyright and rename. And then rename that. We're not in our tech logo, we're now Apple's new. And then get rid of all this as well. So you can see in this, so this is the standard format for if, you, if you're going to put in a black and white, or rather just a, a two color bitmap into the into the e-ink software library. Um, it defines the, the width in pixels, which was 300 I believe. The height was, let's go back to this and just check, because I've completely forgotten. Three hundred by two forty. So three hundred by two forty over eight was thirty. So that's actually in bytes, not in pixels. Just one thing to note. Um, and then we're going to copy this four times so that we've got each of the colours, and then it will just pull up the width and height for each one. Um, so there's our black. We'll copy that into there. Next, let's do green. So we'll clear that canvas. Load up our green. I don't know why it never remembers the last folder. Where was it? Yeah. Uh, green. Yeah. There you go. That one didn't ask to dither, so that's quite nice. Into there. And we're done. Close that, we don't need it. Um, that's already in the in the right location. So if we go back into Atmel Studio, we can close Sublime now as well. We can also close bitmaps L C D. Your work here is done. Sure. And then if we go into there, let's do that show all files again so that we can add in that we can add in that image. And there it is. Let's right click and do include in project. Close that off. And then underneath here, if we do hash include apples new. And then the what we want to use for putting an image in is this one. Let's get rid of the text just for now. Uh, load mono image. We need the image array. I got ahead of myself closing that. Let's open it in Atmos Studio. So apples black. 
is size of apples black. And width is width. Height is height bytes. X is zero, Y is zero. Foreground color is pixel black. You can see there the, the different colors that are available. And then background color is just pixel none. So where there's a one, it'll be black. And where there's a zero, it won't render anything. But you can change it to, to white or green or whatever. So you do have the option there to have, to have two colors. But by putting none, it's essentially a transparent image. Um, next, we're going to do orange pixel red. Cool. Let's run that. Is that working? Yeah, that is erasing and programming. And then let's see if that'll that should show should show correctly. Don't forget. First, we've got to do a clean just to make sure that we're not going to ghost what was there before. And then we'll be updating with uh, with what we'll see. Things like text aren't so bad. I don't think that'll be such an issue as far as ghosting goes. But yeah, a big image of an apple will, or three apples will cause quite a bit of difficulty if you don't do that clean first. So that's the clean, which is only barely cleaned it. This is this is why we do two updates. <laughs> and here we go. That was the first look at our apples. There we go. Not terrible. <laughs> so, yeah, that is all. That is how you get an image onto an e-ink display. If we think back to when we started on this, when we had um, when we had Photoshop open and we we did that initial dithering, it looked absolutely terrible. Um, the only issue was that it was just too big. If you look closely at that, it won't look great. But from far away, if you're using it like a shelf label in a greengrocer um, as a sign for meeting rooms that kind of thing which is exactly what these things are are going to get aimed at, at doing it can look really good um certainly it's great for colored text and that kind of thing like say hobbyists like to use these to create a calendar and that kind of thing um so to have things colored to, for you know for different meetings if you've got something on at work or if you've got something on at home then it's really good to utilize those in in that way so yeah yeah i'm pleased with that um there is a there is a full-on example code which I'll show you now um, in fact I'll just copy the actual I'll copy that code across from here there we go. I was just checking and I was like I definitely told it to to do an update after all that there we go but like I said before when e-ink pick their images they're, they're picking images that work quite well um, so I did the exact same with the French flag. Granny Smiths come from France, so that was quite useful to pick a French flag. They also can come from Portugal, but I don't think a Portuguese flag would work quite well. So yeah, there are definitely limitations, but there's certainly a lot of possibilities as well. It depends on whether or not it's it's suited to that application. And as with all e-ink displays, I can remove the power and it will just retain that image. Remember, it's only using power when it's actually updating. That is part of it. And the other thing as well is it's it's entirely for for sunlight reading. It it works really well out in the sun. The more light you add, because it's reflective, the the better it will be to read. It can still be used in the dark. The the Kindles and whatnot have all got front lights on them. You just put a, a acrylic sheet over the top. It doesn't have to be very thick. Um, and then some side firing LEDs, and and that'll get it all lit up. So world of possibilities with e ink.